Josh Holtz. Uh, tools. Um, and today we're going to be talking about going from nothing to the App Store. Um, going to give some little fast lane uh, tips, bits of information along the way. And it's going to be a live code session. Um, so I'm Josh Holtz. Uh, I started a rocking, or I started a software consulting company called Rock and Cat uh, in 2011. Um, I do uh, software consulting, uh, mainly iOS, macOS, and Fastlane consulting. Um, and uh, I've been working with Fastlane since it started in 2015. Um, to uh, I guess today, um, I've been core contributor since. 2015, and I've been lead maintainer since uh, March of 2018. Um, and just another thing about me, I do have a stutter and a fear of public speaking, but uh, I'm here anyway, so uh, we'll see how this goes. Um, let's get started. So I'm going to give a quick intro on what Fastlane is. Um, Fastlane is mobile app automation done right. Um, easiest way to build and release mobile apps um, going from, I can't point at the screen, screenshots, uh, deployment, app store, and code signing. And we're going to be going through most of that today except for automating screenshots. We don't have time for that. Um, so today's goal, we're going to start off uh, with a Swift UI app that it has a iOS and Mac OS uh, build target. Um, it's pretty simple. There's just a single like label on the screen that says, hello world. Um, nothing too complex because we're not actually going to get into any Swift code. There's no Fastlane integration, um, nothing else going on, uh, nothing created in the developer website yet. This is like as basic as you can start off from Xcode. And we're going to end up with uh, created apps on developer portal. Uh, App Store Connect uh, with certificates, uh, provisioning profiles. Uh, it's going to build code sign, code sign um, submit binaries to the App Store. And then uh, if we have time, we'll do a little, a little extra fun Fastlane stuff on top of that. Um, and as I mentioned, we are not going to touch the developer portal at all. Um, we may go look at it as proof that there is something there, but we're not going to go edit things unless things go horribly, which they shouldn't hopefully go horribly. Um, so today's process, uh, we're going to install Fastlane. Um, Bundler is the way we're going to do that. I'll talk about that more later. Um, we're going to initialize Fastlane, get uh, our fast file created. Uh, we're going to stub out the fast file with the lanes that we're going to use for both iOS and macOS. And then we're going to incrementally implement and test each step uh, so that we know that the, the first things work and then they're all gonna uh, add um, after each other until we have one final working thing. Um, we'll add extra functionality if we have time, um, some stuff that kind of helps with the whole deploy process. And then we'll have a Q and A session. So uh, let's code. Uh, we're going to use Bundler to uh, install Fastlane. Um, Bundler manages our dependencies for us. It makes sure that our uh, Fastlane um, is on the correct version that we're using and all of its dependencies too. Um, so we're gonna get a terminal over here. Um, I believe it is a big enough font. If it's not, just uh, yell in chat and we, uh, we should see. And if I don't see it, I'll be told that I need to make it bigger. So I think this is good. We'll go with this. So we have an empty repository here. There is not much. We have a, a workspace. Um, our app is called Hubby uh, Workspace. We have a framework, our Mac OS app, and our iOS app. Um, that's all we got. So we're going to start with Bundler so we can get Fastlane installed and then get into the fun stuff. Um, so to get into, oh, I have to disable that. There we go. Uh, bundle init is how we're going to install Bundler, and we have a gem file in there. We're gonna go into Vim, and uh, this is where we got. So we have we have a gem file. This is where we will install Fastlane from. We're gonna delete this extra stuff. 
we aren't doing Rails. Uh, gem fast gem fast lane is all we need. We're going to go back over here and run bundle install. Bundle install will install Fastlane and all of its dependencies. And we're there, we're using Fastlane version 2.146.2, which is about a half an hour old. Um, so the next step, let's go back to our slides here. Uh, so we create a gem file, it creates this gem.log for us, which we don't really need to look at. And then we've installed Fastlane with bundle install. So our next step is to initialize Fastlane. Uh, what we're going to do is run Fastlane init. Uh, fat, oh, I lost my, there it is, Fastlane init. It will ask us four ways to install it. If you want to automate screenshots, automate beta distribution to test flight, um, automate apps for distribution or manual setup. Uh, yes, Vim, I see chat, Vim. That's uh, that's how I roll. Um, we're going to run manual setup uh, since we're gonna do this uh, by hand. Uh, it's gonna ask us some things, and then uh, we have we have a fast lane directory. We'll see it here, but we'll go we'll go see it over in Vim. Um, so I think I need to refresh this. There it is. So we have our gem file, our gem file.lock, our fast lane directory with our app file and our fast file. Uh, we're actually not going to be using the app file today. Uh, we're going to stick with, so we, we, we aren't going to be using the app file. Um, we're going to be using uh, .env files instead, um, but we are going to spend a lot of time in the fast file. Um, where are we here? Here we are. So we're going to delete all of the comments up here. We're not going to delete it. We're not going to have a default platform because we're going to treat iOS and Mac OS equally. Um, so here is our uh, our pretty basic uh, fast file that doesn't really do anything yet. Um, we're going to go back to our slides. So we initialize Fastlane. Uh, not 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 super hard to do. Uh, so we're going to stub out the fast file now. Uh, I did put links in the slides. I'll post slides up somewhere later so that uh, you can see I, that is duplicate links. That should not be right. I'll update the slides later as well. Um, but I have links to the docs where I pulled these things from. Um, we're going to stub out the lanes that we want and then comment the lanes so we know what they're going to do. And then we're going to hook the lanes up to each other because our lanes are actually going to have a composition form um, where they... Uh, uh, one calls the one before it, uh, so we have one 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 good process, um, and we're going to start subbing out fast our, our fast file. So, what we are going to do is we're going to have two platforms. I'm gonna we're going to have platform iOS, and we're going to have platform. I believe it's Mac. It could be Mac OS. I think it's Mac. Um, we're just going to delete this for now. We'll do a little bit of copy and pasting later. Um, so our first lane that we are going to do, it's going to be called, something my notes, here it is. Oh, that's the wrong one. Here it is. Uh, signing. Um, signing is going to sync our signing for us. Uh, we're also going to have a lane that is called uh, build that's going to uh, build and compile, build compile our app for us and uh, export the binaries. And then we're going to have a lane called release, which will send our binaries to the app store. Um, we'll comment here that this will do, it'll just, we'll just do sync signing. Uh, it's in the name, but I mean, we'll, we'll add to it. This is going to build the binary. And then this will release the binary. Um, this DESC is a very fast lane way uh, to add comments to your lanes. Um, I'll show you what this looks like right now. Uh, so we can run fast lane lanes. And uh, for iOS, we have sync signing, build binary, and release. They don't do anything yet, but it at least it at least shows us what lanes we have. We can add more information on what they do later. 
Um, but we're just gonna we're just gonna go with this for now. Um, let's see. We are then going to do the same thing for Mac. Uh, we won't do a whole bunch of editing in Mac yet. We're gonna do iOS first. But if we go over now and run fast lane lanes again, uh, we'll see we have our iOS lanes for signing build release and our Mac for signing build release. Cool. So um, I can actually run fast lane uh, build. Oh, I should probably spell it right. Fast lane build. Nope, fast lane iOS build. Cool. So it did absolutely nothing, and that is fine because that is what it's going to do. Um, so we stubbed out the uh, the lanes that we want. Um, we commented the lanes, and now we're going to hook the lanes up to each other. So the way this is going to work is our signing is going to lead into build, and build is going to lead into release. Um, so in order to build, we are going to need to call signing, and then in order to release, we're going to need to call build. So we can call We'll be able to call signing by itself uh, to make sure that signing is totally fine. Um, we're going to then call uh, build, which we will, uh, which requires signing, but we know that signing is going to be great. Um, and then we're going to call release eventually that, which will call build, which will call signing. Uh, this kind of allows us to test all the different steps. Um, so that's how we're going to step out those lanes. Um, we are now going to do some configuration uh, with .env in preparation for calling our Fastlane actions. So the Fastlane actions we're gonna be calling are create, uh, create app online, uh, which will create the app on the developer portal and App Store Connect. Um, we're also going to be using uh, Match, which is also called sync code signing. Uh, that will create our provisioning profiles and uh, certificates for us. And we're going to be calling uh, build iOS app and build Mac OS app, um, which will uh, build the uh, binaries and then uh, upload to App Store. Um, and all of these require uh, configurations, to, configurations to be set. And uh, these configurations can be set from within the fast file um, by hard coding things, or we can do it through our .env files, which is what we're going to do. It makes the fast file cleaner. Um, and it makes things a little bit easier uh, to change up and uh, uh, see the different configurations for all of the uh, ENVs that we're using. So by default, Fastlane will load just a .env file automatically. So we can put stuff in here um, that, is, that is shared um, between uh, iOS and Mac and things that, that, that aren't secret that we can commit. Um, we're going to create a .env.secret file which I'm actually not gonna edit on screen because it has my secrets, um, but that will have a GitHub API token. It'll have um, the application specific password, which we need to upload to the app store. Um, th and then this file, we're not gonna commit to the repository because it's secret, it shouldn't be there. And then we're gonna have our .env.ios and .env.mac, which will load um, in, the, in their uh, specific platforms, uh, so iOS, uh, iOS will have some of its own configurations, Mac will have some of its own, and they'll all get loaded depending on which platform we're gonna run. Uh, I did forget a lane. We are going to have one that's outside the platforms that is called create app. Um, and this, we'll just, start, we'll just start coding here. It's gonna call produce or create app online. Uh, this is also called produce. Um, and this is going to create the uh, this is going to create the uh, the app on uh, create app on developer portal and app store connect for us. So this is all that this lane is going to have. We're not going to configure it here. We're going to configure it in our .env files. So we're going to create a new file for fastlane.env. Um, we're going to create a new file for fastline.env.secret. Uh, we don't actually need secret yet, I don't think. Uh, we don't need iOS. Uh, we'll, eh, we'll just create them all. Tab edit fastlane.env.mac and we're gonna create a new one, fastlane.env.secret. All right, cool. So that's all we need. 
Um, we're going to put here now, we're going to put a whole bunch of secrets that we need. Um, when communicating with produce the or create app online, the first thing we need is we are going to need our fast lane uh, account info. So um, we're going to use my personal info, my personal team name, and my team name. Cool. So uh, this will get used by almost all the tools in Fastlane that need it. Uh, it'll be used by Create App Online, by Sync Code Signing, and by Upload to Test Flight. Um, this is uh, that's that's what it is. That's my it, it, it tells it tells Fastlane which uh, which user and which team to upload things to. Um, for Produce, we are going to put information here about our app. Um, I'll show you our Xcode app now. Um, let's, here's our bundle identifier. Um, I actually had a, my prep demo bundle, de bundle identifier in there. So we're going to change that now for both Mac and iOS. They are the same bundle, bundle identifier. Um, so we're going to put this bundle identifier into produce app bundle identifier. We're going to give it a name, uh, Josh. Coco heads NL demo. Uh, we're going to give an initial version of 0 0.1.0. .0. This is what it'll create it as on the App Store. Uh, we're going to give it some SKU, which I still don't know what a good SKU scheme is. So we're going to go that. And then for platforms, we are going to go iOS and OS X. Um, I think that is all we need for that. Um, yeah. So what we're going to do now is our, I think everything's correct. Yeah, yeah. So um, everything to create our app online should be there. We have our account to log into our iOS developer account. And we have our uh, produce options for app identifier, our app name, app version, our SKU. And we're going to create a combined iOS and Mac app. Let's give it a shot. Uh, what I call again? F L shoot. Um, what was it? F L create app. Okay. So fast lane create app. This should uh this should create it for us on the developer portal and App Store Connect. A little bit of a little bit of spookiness. Uh, so we created it on the Dev Center. It's creating it on App Store Connect now. Um, and boom, we have, we have the app on the app store, on app store connect. We are not going to, uh, I'm not going to show it yet. I said, I didn't want to go to the, go to the app stores or to the websites. Um, but this looks, this looks good enough. We got an ID here. Uh, so this, it would take a whole bunch of clicks on the developer portal. Um, we didn't click at all, really. We just typed some stuff. And this is nice and repeatable between projects. So this is what I always use. Um, now, our next step is to do our signing. So we're going to go back to our fast file. And our signing is going to happen in our signing lane. <clears throat> and for signing, uh, we call match. So that's all we're going to do for signing, too. Um, not, we will add more in here later, but, uh, right now we're just going to call match or I think it's called sync code signing. Uh, we're gonna go with that because that's, it makes a little more sense. It's also called match. Okay. So for this one, we will need some shared, uh, shared environment variables that both Mac and iOS will use. Um, where are they here? Uh, here we go. Okay. Um, so it's going to require a match username, which the match username for me is this, it, this is your Apple developer account. So we have me at Josh Holtz. Our app identifier is going to be the same from up here. Um, and then our, uh, app type is going to be app store. I don't think there's a dash in there. There is. Not a dash in there. Okay. And then I'm not going to type my match repository, um, but here we go. All right. So 
Um, we have our, my match username. This is what it's used to kind of sign into the Apple Developer Portal. Uh, we have my Git repo, which is private. Don't bother going there. You won't get access to it. We have our identifier. This is what it's going to create the profiles with. And we're going to create uh, App Store profile types. And it'll verify that we have a uh, uh, distribution certificate. Um, we need a little bit more uh, information for iOS. Not much, not much, but we are going to tell it we're using match platform iOS. Match should technically know because we're in platform iOS, but I still like to do things uh, explicitly. And I wanted to make sure things really worked for this demo. So now we have everything we need for signing. Um, I think we can run this. We're going to run Fastlane iOS signing. Uh, we'll see some output here uh, and I won't super read through it because I wanna make sure we have enough time for all the other fun stuff, but it is cloning my existing repo. Um, I do have a distribution cert already made that I was testing with today. I didn't feel like revoking it, um, but now it's creating our provisioning profile uh, called match app store com Coco heads demo L, uh, Coco heads NL demo. So we now have a distribution cert that is uh, installed in my keychain. And then our profile is also downloaded, all of this is stored, encrypted on a Git repository. Perfect. So the next fun bit now, um, oh, that's the, uh, where are we here? Here we are. Okay. So uh, after, we're, we're not fully done with code signing yet. Um, this part gets a little bit weird. It's pretty specific to how I like this process, um, but Right now, our code signing is set to automatically manage signing. This is not exactly what I want. Um, I don't like to sign into my iOS developer account in Xcode, and automatically signing does not work on a CI because you can't sign in to Xcode with your account. Um, so we're gonna use manual signing. Um, I could configure manual signing, uh, the code sign identity, the provisioning profile specifier, and uh, the code sign style in build settings uh, manually. I don't want to do that. Um, so I'm going to use Fastlane to do that for me. Um, we're going to go over here and I'm just going to copy for the sake of time. Oh, we're going to put four, four lines in here uh, and I have really messed up tabbing. So let's fix that. Uh, okay. Where is, there we go, okay. So this looks a little bit weird. Um, I think I can make it look like this. There we go, okay. So what this is gonna do is after our sync code sign runs, uh, it puts the, a, what's called the provisioning profile mapping in actions lane context. This is a singleton global access thing to information after actions run. Um, this mapping it has a key of a bundle ID and then the profile that was created. Um, so what we're doing is we're getting this dictionary of mapping. We're going to give it a key of our app identifier and it's gonna return the profile name. So update code signing settings is gonna modify my Xcode project, which is usually not great, but this is, we're, we're gonna add some things later on at the end that will allow us to do a nice uh, Git reset and just ignore that after a release is done. Um, but we're gonna, go and put some of these uh, configurations in our um, inside of our .env file. Um, I'm gonna copy and, copy and paste these, and this is going in iOS. Um, so what we're doing is these are environment variables that are specified or that, that, that are used within this update code, code signing action. In order to see them, we can run Fastlane action update code signing settings. And this will show us all the environment variables that, that we need over here. Um, I copied and pasted them from over on my other monitor, but we're gonna give them a project path. Um, the target is Hubby iOS. The signing build configuration we only wanna modify is release. We're gonna turn automatic code signing off and we're gonna tell it that we want to use Apple distribution um, as, our, uh, as our profile type. 
Um, and I believe that's the only thing that we need for that one. Uh, yes, okay. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run signing again. It's gonna pull down our uh, build configure or our, uh, our certificates and provisioning profiles. Um, and it, this will update our Xcode project. I'm gonna undo the changes once we're done, but uh, they, will, they will update. So let's go in here. Uh, apparently I modified, oh, I did modify this already. I think I modified this. Yeah, okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll commit that first. Uh, that was another bundle change. We don't wanna undo that later. Okay, um, so now we're gonna run Fastlane iOS signing again, and it's gonna modify, it's gonna turn off automatic signing for release um, and uh, set our bridging profile information. Oh, so apparently I entered something wrong because our path to Xcode project is not showing up. Uh, what did I do? Oh, I know what I did. We aren't. So we aren't actually loading our .env.ios. I forgot a step. Uh, we're going to do, we have to do before all here and run .env.load.env.ios. Um, and then we also need to go put in our gem file, uh, gem.env, we've got to require .env. All right, fast file. Okay, so um, what this will do now is when we get into the platform for iOS, it's going to load our .env.ios. Uh, let's bundle install to make sure we have .env. All right, now this should work. All right, so we can see that it updated uh, code sign identity for Apple distribution or to Apple distribution for our release target, update the profile name. If we go over here now for iOS, uh, we'll see that our release is not automatically signed and we have our bundled identifier is wrong for some reason. I thought we committed that. There we go. Our signing is, is now working for uh, for our iOS project. Um, for some reason, that didn't get committed. Um, so we're gonna undo these changes because I don't want to commit those code signing changes. Um, and we're gonna There we go. Thought I'd change that. I might not have. Okay. Um, let's commit this again. Oh. All right, bundle change. Okay. Now we should be good. We're gonna run this one more time to make sure that we are still good. Fastlane iOS signing. Uh, so now that we have the signing uh, done, I'll go over here and it should show that everything is good now. Maybe iOS signing, there we go. Okay, no errors. We can totally build this uh, on our local machine and then also on a CI, no problem. Um, so we're gonna remove those changes, get status. Okay, the next step that we're going to do uh, I may have skipped here. So we created the app online, developer portal, and the app store. Um, we are using sync code signing to create our certificates, our profiles, and store them in a Git repository. Um, we are using update code signing settings uh, to modify the build settings, which we won't commit after we're done. We'll do that later. Now we're gonna use build iOS app to uh, make our signed IPA. Um, it calls Xcode build under the hood. It installs SPM dependencies, it compiles the app and signs and exports the binary. So we're gonna go back into our fast file now. 
we're going to go into our build lane that is already calling signing that we, that we just got working. And we're going to call build iOS app. And the cool thing is that's all we're going to need to do in our fast file. We're going to go put some configurations in our .env file now. Um, I'm going to copy and paste them for the sake of time again. Uh, so we have our, we're going to call the iOS scheme. We're going to export to App Store. And we're just going to put in an out in a, to a custom output directory that's build iOS. So we're going to save that. Uh, and then we're going to uh, run Fastlane iOS. What I call it? I forgot what I called it. Uh, build. Makes sense. All right. Fastlane iOS build. So we're going to go through the same thing that we saw before. It's going to make sure that we have our, our proper certs and profiles installed. It's going to modify our project. <clears throat> um, and now it's using Xcode build to compile the app, which has almost nothing in it. And cool, we actually compiled a and signed an IPA uh, on the first try. Um, I don't know how many times I've done that. It hasn't been many. Um, but here's our IPA now. So that is what we're going to end up sending to App Store Connect in our next step. Um, we're going to go back over here. Uh, we have, so we're going to call our release lane now. Our release lane is going to make use of everything we did already. It's going to call build, which calls signing, which calls all of, uh, which calls uh, match to do all of the certificate and profile work. So in here, we are going to run, uh, where is it here? We're going to run, I think it's upload to App Store, uh, also called deliver. D L uh, that's right. And this one is also called Jim. Okay. So that's all we need to put into our release lane. Um, like, of course, like the rest, we got to put some configurations into our dot I dot env file. Um, the only thing which we don't actually need to put is our deliver platform because this is taken from the platform iOS that is used above. And now we're going to submit to the App Store Fastlane iOS release. Uh, so we're, we'll we'll go through this again. Um, but we should we should end up seeing a uh, uh, a little bit of waiting time when it uploads the the signed IPA to the App Store. It's actually going to fail. Um, yep, I totally forgot a thing. So uh, we're going to cancel. Okay. Um, I I did forget a few more settings. Uh. Here we go. I don't know what I was thinking. We're gonna go back into our, uh, just our normal .env file. We're gonna put a few things in here. We need the identifier. I totally forgot that this was going in here. Um, we need my team names again, team name. Um, we are not going to run pre-check, uh, which does a little bit of checking for like metadata and stuff like that. Don't really care about that today. We're skipping screenshots and we're going to skip metadata. Um, and then we're also going to do this other cool uh, parameter called additional upload parameters. It's gonna be using a different uh, upload service within Apple called Asperac, which I actually find quicker. Um, so we're gonna use that. The other thing we need to do is we need some secret information um that i said i i wouldn't uh i wouldn't actually edit on screen um but oh because the account i'm using for uploading this is a has 2fa enabled i need to set an apple application specific password so that it can uh authenticate that uh i am me and that it can upload the binary uh so i'm going to set this offline and or off on the other screen and then we can try uploading again. Uh, all right, let me do this for a second. All right, now we should be good. Hopefully we, go to, we can release the App Store now. Nope, I lied. We forgot one more thing. 
we need to actually <laughs> load our .env.secret. Um, and that is gonna happen up here. We're gonna call before all do end dot env dot load dot env dot secret. So this will load our secret environment variables, which we only have one right now, um, before any of the lanes are used. And then just for safety, which it does this automatically, but we're gonna require dot env. Now we can upload to the app store. Um, so again, it's calling Xcode build right now uh, from within build the build iOS app action. We export an IPA, we're uploading to app store. It's setting the latest version to 1.0 point or 0.1.0. It's fetching our environment variable with our application password. Um, and now it's uploading the binary. Oh, nope, nope. That is, okay, we aired out. What are we out on? Oh, what? Okay. Um, why did that not work? Did I type it wrong? Oh, I, I had a K on the end. Whoops, all right. No one saw that. Um, now, now it should work. I am going to log in to my developer account. Um, or if, if I can find a Safari window, uh, developer. So this is going, I'm going to log into my app store connect account over here. Uh, get the right team selected. We failed again. Oh, I know what I did one more time. I copied that wrong. All right, co, co heads SNL, okay. Now it's gonna work, I think. Um, let's just copy and paste this to make sure to do the right thing. All right. One more time. One more time. Yep, this will happen. Copy and paste errors, you know. All right, so, all right, we have it going. I have my window over here for when it succeeds this time. Hopefully not too much longer. All right, there we go. Okay, we have, we have App Store. So if I go over into our App Store Connect now, we should see some activity of our build. Boom, it's processing, cool. So we have an iOS app now on the App Store. Now it is time to do the exact same thing for Mac. Um, for Mac, I am going to change the build ID because it will yell at me when, or sorry, the, the, the build number. It will yell at me. Um, oh. So for Mac, we are going to do stuff really similar. Um, our Mac platform uh, is going to be, for Mac, it's gonna be Mac OS. Uh, this is Mac, o Mac OS. This is Mac OS. I could probably do some fancy replace, but I don't trust myself right now. I don't trust myself doing this either. Uh, Mac OS and then deliver is OS X. Um, there is one more thing that we need to add for match. Um, Mac OS apps need a Mac installer distribution cert, just an additional cert and we'll have match make that and fetch that for us. Um, but we have Mac, 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 Mac. Okay, so that's everything that we need to do for Mac OS in, 
Uh, it's real similar to iOS, just things slightly tweaked a little bit. Um, now we're going to copy, or just we're just going to delete everything we have in Mac. A little bit of copy paste. Um, there are ways to make this a little bit better, but we're just going to go with this. The only change we have to do is tell it to load uh, .env.mac instead of .ios. And now we should be able to do Fastlane Mac release. And it should create signing uh, build, give us a signed PKG that, the, uh, that it's gonna upload to the App Store. So hopefully this one works right away. Nope, we, that's not, I told it to build iOS app, not Mac app. This is gonna, this is gonna break. It might break, it might work actually. This might actually work. Yeah, build iOS app. It Fastly might be smart enough to not realize that. We're gonna find out. Looks like it built the PKG, all right. So um, let's go change that first because I don't like that. We're gonna change the build Mac app. But if we now go over to our, uh... oh, that's all, let's see, what do we got here? Oh, iOS, Mac OS, there we go. We got our Mac build. It actually worked first try even though I made a mistake. Um, so I think that is mostly, that was the point of the whole demo. Um, I'm gonna add a few more lines into the fast file. We're not gonna test them because I think we're running a little bit low on time for Q and A, but we are using upload to app store now. It's also called deliver and it uploads a binary to the app store. Um, one thing I mentioned earlier that I was gonna say, I was gonna retouch up upon was uh, this, where's my cursor? this update code signing settings, this modifies our Xcode project. And I don't like to having a Fastlane process that modifies and leaves stuff unchanged at the end. Um, it, it, it makes it really weird to release, um, release things. You wanna make sure that you have a nice clean repository uh, before you're releasing and also after. So uh, what I like to do is in my release line, uh, call ensure get status clean. Uh, just make sure everything is committed, um, nothing hanging out. And then we also call ensure git branch. I don't know why that tab's funny. Um, so what these two lines does do, do is they make sure that our git repository is clean um, and also that we are on master. Because we only want we only want to release this when we're on master in a good git state. Um, and then at the end of this, what we would do is called reset git repo. And reset git repo would just do a, uh, a git checkout dash dash of any change files that we have. Um, it's, not, it's not clean. I wish there were better ways to dynamically set build settings per configuration um, through Xcode build, <clears throat> um, maybe WWDC 2020. Um, that'd be super nice for me. But uh, if, if we can't do that, this, this will work. Um, a few other things that I have ha that I added in here, which I will have this repo public uh, later on. Uh, we add a git tag and then push the git tag. Um, this will allow us to tag the version as 0 0.0.1.0 in git. And then after this, um, after this, I also end up setting set GitHub release, uh, which will create a GitHub release uh, for our tag, um, where you can put notes, you can attach a, a uh, Mac app if you want to it or something. Um, this is kind of my, my standard approach of kind of creating Fastlane from nothing to something. Uh, start with the, the stub, see kind of what, what lanes I all wanna call, start with the most basic part and just keep building on top of that. And when I have my final like working approach, kind of decorate that with all the nice extras that I have. Um, 
Uh, and uh, I think that is that's it. Um, I we uh, we started off with nothing basic app that had no no changes to it besides me having the wrong bundle ID, um, and then uh, added um, produce to create the app. Uh, we created our distribution certs and profiles. Um, we then built it through Xcode build command line tool with Jim slash build iOS app, and then uh, submitted it to the app store for both iOS and Android. Um, uh, you can follow me on Twitter, GitHub. I'm super active on both, too active probably on Twitter. Um, I take fast lane questions and all the stuff on Twitter, so feel free to hit me up there too. But I think now it's also time for questions. I think I think I'm going to be sent some questions to answer. All right. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, so we have one question. I'm going to put it on the screen. Uh, here we go. So QA. Um, what is current plan for Fastlane to adopt the App Store Connect API? That is a loaded question that I have opinions on. Um, so I. I love the App Store Connect API. I think it was a great ad, um, and I would love to see more of it. Um, but right now, the App Store Connect API is really only covering maybe 10% of what Fastlane does. Um, it, uh, um, it, really, it, it really helped when using things that interacted with TestFlight. That was the first part of the API that they released. Um, and it was it was nice, but in Fastlane we still can't use the JWT uh, auth format that the new API uses. Um, since when it was first released, that was kind of uh, a feature that they only allowed some people to use. But all of Fastlane still needs the standard web auth, um, so we have to still use the web auth. But the App Store Connect APIs are proxied through web auth, um, through some of the, uh, through, through some endpoints. Um, it doesn't give us the full App Store Connect API, but we do get to use some of it. Um, and the test flight one is pretty good. Uh, the developer part of the API that was released um, in the second phase is still not fully functional. Um, it's missing uh, being able to create Apple distribution and Apple developer certs uh, through the JWT auth. Um, it's, it's only working through web auth through another like proxy layer API kind of thing. Um, it's kind of weird. Um, so I would totally love to go full App Store Connect API if we can. Um, the hard part is it's only covering a little bit, a little bit of Fastlane. Uh, what I would love to see is if we could get rid of using the uh, the standard web auth altogether. Um, if Apple <clears throat> could um, take the JWT auth and allow us to access the private legacy APIs that we were using with that JWT auth, that would be a huge win, uh, I, I, I believe, for the Fastlane community. Um, I, have a blog post that I'm working on that kind of explains that too. But uh, adopting the App Store Connect API is a whole thing. Um, I could probably do another hour on that. Um, we'll go to the next question. Uh, is Fastlane a, oh, let me copy this one. Can't copy it. Uh, is, that is small. Um, I don't like that. Anyway, I'll make this bigger later. Is Fastlane able to deal with push notification, push notification tokens? Uh, so Fastlane can. Uh, where's 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 my web browser? Um, Fastlane Fastlane can create uh, certs for uh, push notifications if that's what that question is asking. Uh, the tool is called PEM. Uh, PEM automatically generates and renews your push notification profiles. Um, it's not necessarily tokens. The tokens are uh, what the apps use uh, when you register for notifications. But Fastlane does have uh, PEM, also called Get Push Certificates, uh, for dealing with those uh, for dealing with push notifications. Um, how long have you been working on Fastlane? Uh, I've been working on Fastlane since uh, it was. That's also small. Uh, since about 2015, at the beginning, 
when uh, Felix first created it. Um, all the tools were separate in their in, in their own gems and uh, in their own uh, re uh, repositories. But I've been pretty active in Fastlane since then, and heavily active since I took over the lead maintainer role in 2018. Um, some plugins slash uh, some plugins that I suggest well using Vim for iOS and Mac OS development. Oof, that is, uh, uh, that's, that's a thing. Um, so I actually don't do iOS or Mac OS development directly in Vim. I do use Xcode still. Um, all my other development I, I do in Vim. Um, one, I don't know exactly what it's called. It's been a while since I've installed it, but my favorite plugin is dealing with AG slash Silver Surfer. Um, I can do a control P to search for file names. Uh, and then I can do a control T to open things in a new tab, or I have control T, which does a fuzzy search over the whole repo. Um, that's pretty much the only plugin I use. Uh, the biggest thing to use or that I do with command line is uh, Tmux. Um, I can't not use Tmux. Um, I use Fastlane without .env files. Where else can be stored data if you had? Where else can uh, you store data in the .env files? Okay, so um, Fastlane. If you don't want to use .env files, which is totally fine, um, you we have uh, oh, cancel. Uh, where is it? App file. Um, we have something called an app file, um, which does something similar. Um, you can you can uh, set your Apple ID in here. Um, there's also, I think, a for, I don't I forget the syntax, but like for platform iOS, uh, where you can then set uh, app identifier in here. Um, this is all in the docs under the app file section, um, which I can go to over here. Uh, app file um, it explains how to store it. it. It does store things similarly as as you would in .envs um, in a more Ruby fast file syntax. Some people prefer this. Um, I, uh, I prefer using dot, .env files, but totally for some preference, if you want, you can even totally hard code stuff in your fast file. No, no one will judge. Um, I use Fastlane without .env file. Oh, I guess that one. I heard last year that Fastlane was being rewritten in Go. Is that correct? Um, I don't know who's trolling me. Um, but uh, Go is not not is is not what we're rewriting in because we're also not rewriting Fastlane. Um, it is staying in Ruby because there is a lot there. Uh, there's been a lot of questions about if we're going to rewrite in Swift because that makes sense, but that would probably take years. And uh, there's enough uh, enough backlog and things that we can do in the current version that are that also take years. Um, so it is totally going to stay in Ruby. We do have a Swift interface if you want to use that, but Fastlane isn't just for iOS. So well, I'm, I'm sidetracking into uh, Swift because I assume I'm being trolled by this Go question. Um, but it's it's not going to get rewritten in Swift because Fastlane uh, is uh, is used cr uh, cross platform for multiple different uh, app platforms. Uh, so, I mean, it's it's used in Linux, uh, Mac, and Windows, which I guess they can probably all use Swift now, but it's not just iOS or Mac OS. It's also Android, uh, Ruby, or Fastlane's also used to deploy Fastlane and other Ruby gems. Um, I use Fastlane to deploy uh, game development. Um, so it's, uh, Ruby's a pretty good scripting language, and we're going to stay with Ruby. Um what happened to the Swift version of Fastlane? It's still totally there. Um, it is, where is it? There is a, there's a spot here. Um, we're just, we're just going to search for it. Swift. Getting started with Fastlane and Swift beta. So you can, uh, you can write your fast file in Swift. Uh, I still do it in Ruby. It's quicker for me. I like Ruby syntax. Uh, especially when I'm dealing with scripting stuff. Well, I like Swift syntax when I'm doing app stuff. Um, but you can run Fastlane init Swift, creates an Xcode project with a fast file, that Swift file um, that you can create. It looks real similar. It's a little more verbose, but uh, it is what it is. It's a little bit slower because it has to, uh, 
uh, has to uh, send the uh, the Swift uh, through a socket to the Ruby stuff that then sends it back up into Swift when it's done. Um, so uh, that it totally works for some people. It's fun. Um, we we do still maintain it, um, but uh, it's gonna the, the the core of it will stay in Ruby. Um, I think that is potentially all of the questions. I don't see any more funneling in uh, through comments or through Slack. Someone's typing at me. We might have one more. That was it. All right, cool. All right, well, uh, thank you for everybody's time. Um, again, you can follow me on Twitter, GitHub. Uh, I interact with everybody that I can. Um, and uh, let's do this again. Thanks for having me, everyone.